Hi everyone, Monkey Dash here. Uh, I'm just going to be looking today at this um, interview with The Verge. Um, so on April 14th the interview happened and today is April 20th. Uh, I've not looked at this yet so this is fresh for me. Uh, but I have seen the screenshots already. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully there'll be some interesting information in here. Uh, maybe we'll find some more about um, how things compare to his other article that he wrote several years ago. Um, this here is the, one of the first screenshots. We've got this um, monkey statue of some kind. So maybe this is uh, underneath Monkey Island in the health gear. Yeah, we've got the mushrooms. So this could be in the maze underneath Monkey Island, um, un but inside the giant monkey head. So that's exciting. Um, so yeah, let's see what we, what we got here. A mysterious and dangerous location on Monkey Island. Okay, so that's what they put there. I don't know if that's what they've been told, or if that's what they maybe that's what they've been told as they're speaking to Ron. This year, Ron pulled off perhaps the best April Fool's joke ever. Yeah, so on April Fool's, he said there's a new Monkey Island game coming out, um, and then everyone's like, "Ah, oh, April Fools!" And then a couple of days later, he posted another. Uh, I think it was a tweet saying, um, you know what, um, I felt bad for the joke the other day, so I went ahead and made the game. Uh, obviously he hasn't made the game completely yet, but it's, it's in the works. Uh, it was real. Um, by sharing the official trailer. Uh, yeah, there was a tweet accompanying it anyway. The game promises to harken back to the classic point and click era. Gilbert and Dave Grossman are back to co-writes. There's a good composer, Michael Land, so that's original. Uh, Peter McConnell and Clint, so, so writing the music once again, so this is all, um, I'm not sure who these are, uh, maybe these are the, um, uh, for the special edition or something, um, I'm terrible at the behind the scenes stuff, I'm more of a law person, anyway, um, I, Jay Peters, not me, Monkey Dash, um, I'm making return to Monkey Island to visit what you do to the world. And you don't necessarily be a gay because you found a favorite one. This is not necessarily to show you the purpose. And he's really of the original game but just in the new art style so that's appreciated it's a nice update why are you both returning to Monkey Island now Ron as is kind of obvious if you follow my blog or follow me on Twitter I'm just constantly bombarded by people who want a new Monkey Island I mean, of course because he's the guy it's something he's been interested in. Uh, I missed a sentence here because I accidentally so was the interviewer making a mess of it. Just, just leave. I don't know. I think the opportunity when I think when that opportunity did arise, it was something that I was very eager to jump on and rope Dave into the big scheme. I think at the bottom level, I think it's just the right. It's just that the timing was right. So yeah, he's got the chance to do it. People want him to do it, so that's why. Dave Grossman. I think we should do these things periodically. I feel like Ron and I have evolved enough that we have some new things to say about the world of Monkey Island. And the minute he called me, I was just like, oh, this is a chance to work with Ron, Ron again and revisit these characters, the world that I love, and to have some fun. It was not a hard sell, honestly. I was basically immediately in. I think Ron was still pitching while I was saying, yes, yes, when can we start? So they're both keen. I think you're a little dick. I still have had a lot of... We should get together first from now and we can... I'm in, I'm in, let's do it. Okay. With this new entry, what do we hope to accomplish for people who have maybe never played a Monkey Island game before? 
We would like to correct that imbalance in their lives. Yes. Uh, although, just start at one. Just start at one. I, why would you be like such a snob that you, you won't play the pixel looking... And they've done a special edition now, so they're not even pixelated anymore. Even though the originals are, in my opinion, are better than the special editions. But, uh, you know, that's up for debate. When Dave and I first started to seriously break apart the design and really think about it, I think there were two camps, and that was... It was very important to us to fully embrace that was the fans of Monkey Island, the people who know the games inside out, and quite frankly, probably knows a better knows them better than Dave and I. And we wanted to build a really good, authentic Monkey Island, something that was going to really satisfy their thirst for a new one. So there's going to be a balance here because obviously, talking about the fans of Monkey Island, that's including Curse, Escape, and Tales. So they've got a, a line to tread here. I mean, I include myself in that. I love Curse. I love Escape, for the most part. And Tales was okay. Um, but I do just want this to be a straight sequel to 1 and 2. Like, you, you can just play them as a trilogy and ignore Curse as much as I like it. I think I'd rather they, yeah, they do a completely separate direction. But we're also very aware there are probably way more people out in the world who've never played Monkey Island but have heard about it. We also want to do something that's accessible to them so they can be eased into the world of Monkey Island and not feel like outsiders the moment they started the game. See, this is a thing that... <sighs> this happens a lot when things are rebooted or um, like brought back. It's like, oh, we, we, this might be the first one they watch or play, like so we need them to be introduced into the world. It's like, well, who starts on three? If you're starting on three, that's your problem. Like, Start on one, start on one. Why do the rest of us have to go through a introduction to everything again when we're deep in already? We have to wait for you guys to catch up. You know, it's, why why pander to the people that you know you, you're putting off the actual fans for the sake of new people who are doing a silly thing? It, uh, it's not. It, it it makes sense for standalone things like. Uh, when they did Fallout, Fallout 3 came out and there's a whole new game and it's all kind of introducing things again. And You didn't have to play 1 and 2 to start on 3. Um, you didn't, And the same with like all, all the Fallout games. You can just start on any one and it doesn't matter what order you play them in. Um, it it might, might help to know about the early ones, but it doesn't need... You don't need to. Whereas this one, this is kind of an ongoing story. You've, you've missed two chapters of the story. So... But then again, I don't, it's probably similar that you don't need to know the backstory hugely. There's not that much to catch up on. It's just pirate guy has a ghost pirate for an enemy in love with governor woman. Go. So, it's probably yeah, there's not a whole lot of catching up to do. So, I don't know why I'm complaining here, actually. Um, I take it all back. Yeah, happens any time you make a sequel to anything. Just yeah, sequels are meant to be played afterwards, and so are prequels. The c prequels are supposed to come afterwards. That's why. That's what the cool bit is about. Can you give us any clues as to what you're thinking about? As how? Why can't I read? As to how you're thinking about doing that? I can imagine it's a huge challenge. It is a challenge. That game I did earlier, Thimbleweed Park. I still need to play that. It was a more retro type game. Even with that game, we had people comment that they felt there was a lot of humour and jokes and situations that were just kind of going above their head because they weren't entrenched in that old LucasArts point and click stuff. I really need to play this. It's got like the old verbs and everything. Uh, with this game, Dave and I really tried to have the situations either be explained to people while they're playing it so they understood the context of what they were jumping into, but not in a way that talked down to them. Just very naturally explain the context of what's going on. Or if there was stuff that was going over the head just because it's kind of an inside joke or inside information, just to make sure they didn't feel like they were losing out on something. There's a lot of times, maybe, where things just go kind of right above your head and you don't realise it. So that was what we were really trying to do, is just serve those two audiences well. A lot of that falls down on the writing and this sort of standard practice. So they just want to, yeah. They just don't want people to be missing out. Okay, that's cool. Alright, here's another screen grab. Is that not properly loaded on my screen, or is that all we're getting? This, this dumb old... There we go. All right. So we've got some kind of... Can I line that up properly in the box? It looks like a courtroom or something. Something very... This looks all legal 
a parrot, like a legal symbol. You've got a judge's um, wig. You've got the podium where the, some sort of judge is standing. See, this this is, um, I said before, I'm not sure about the art style. Cause, like, this this looks odd. I, I haven't seen Guybrush yet, and like, if this is if his face is going to look something like this, this weird, I'm not I'm not a fan. I'm not really a fan. Oh, he's got dreads. Is this Captain Dread? You know? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't think so. And then yet, like this guy's head is just a box, and his nose is also a box. Maybe I'll get used to this style, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sold on it. But but then again, is this sort of like a, a way of trying to keep the pixel art of the original games, which were all just blocks, but also making it look modern? So this could kind of fit into the old style without actually going full on pixels. I'm hoping I get used to it. He's got his keys in his hair. He's got a, some sort of fish. Obviously, there's going to be some puzzles going on on here. Maybe you have to get this key off of his head. You're going to have to convince this guy about something. Um, burn something in there. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, Guybrush might be in trouble with the law again. Uh, I'm curious uh, what else you may have learned making thim of a Thimbleweed Park. You're going to apply to return to Monkey Island. Because of the Kickstarter, go back and play a classic. Okay, a lot of things that he was compelled to do things. Uh, the interface being the same, pixel art, etc. So yeah, he, he's like very fan pleasing, but he's fan to him off. Yeah, he used to do crowd pleasing. He he wants to tell the story he wants to tell. The history of being Monkey Island. Monkey Island. It was nice to be able to explore more openly about the art style and things like what the interface was. He was saying. If he wants to leave, and obviously grabs in this screen grabs, I don't know how they're going to do it. Are they going to do it similar to Curse of Monkey Island, where you, you click and the um, verbs pop up? Or uh, is it going to be um, mouse control, uh, uh, but like press P to pick up, press E to examine, that kind of thing? Make sure you don't become so entrenched in the past with stuff. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, mind them updating the gameplay so much. Used to it now. It changes every game from now. So as long as it works, you know, as long as it works, that's the thing. So I didn't. I don't. I don't remember exactly how it worked in Tales, but I remember not being the biggest fan of it. And I know I didn't like the system in the special editions either. The spirit of what many of these uh, adventure games represent without, I don't know what the best word is, cr cruft. I've seen this, this word again, I don't know what it means. Mechanics that maybe don't hold up as well. How are you thinking about keeping that balance? A lot of that for us was taking a step back and really looking at what's going on. How much of it is just cruft? I need to look up what this word is. How much of it is nostalgia? Okay, like, oh, do we, do we just like the verbs because we used to play with the verbs? Or are they actually the best system, you know? Um, and being able to look at everything about how puzzles are constructed, how dialogues happen, how they use info. So they were always working on this. And um, I, th I feel like, you know, in the Golden Era, Day of the Tentacle, the original Monkey Island, Sam and Max, they, they'd got the... Uh, they'd, they'd figured all this out. You know, it's not it wasn't the old Zach McCracken days where they'd... Um, it was a game-breaking um, problem every other scene. Uh, really, yeah, at its core, it's still a point-and-click adventure. It's not a first-person shooter. It's not a car racing game. It's a point-and-click adventure. So, it's all about figuring out the genre and going, what does it mean? What is it that's fun about point-and-click? And making sure we emphasize that and not just being nostalgic. Yeah, everything's got to be about the gameplay and the story. And or. And hopefully jokes. Nothing to drag it back. So yeah, that they, it sounds like they really care about what they're doing. And that's what we want. That's what we want out of this. Can you give any examples? We don't want to talk about specifics, but any examples? If you look at people who play games today, 
a lot of games are on consoles um, PlayStation Switch da -da -da. one of the things we want to do is understand how they're going to do it with the controller okay so they um, well they've been putting them on consoles since escape so yeah I imagine this one would be on a console too there's a different mindset to it there's a, just a different way about how it engages with your gameplay brain um, okay sure sure um, yeah I feel like I, I don't think I'd ever want to play a Monkey Island game on a console I'll, the, yeah the point I'm gonna click over here and go over here and look at it rather than oh, I need to press the thumb to make him run over here it's like a faff it's just one click and he'll get he'll get there eventually instead of me physically controlling it um, we spent a lot of time, far more than we did on think we were really thinking about a controller and how the game can be enjoyable playing with a controller. I don't care about any of this. You mentioned the art style as well. If I'm hearing correctly, it's not going to be pixel based. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. The art you're seeing in the trailer is fairly representative of what the. I can't wait to see Guybrush. Where's gun, when, are we, when are we going to see Guybrush? Should it be pixel art or should it not be pixel art? We just thought we'd have a lot more freedom to make it not pixel art. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think people are going to be very happy with the art once they see it and once they see it moving and the animation. Uh, we have great animators. Yeah, I mean, look here. Here's this uh, melee art, and it does. It look, this looks great. This looks great. You know, the um, it's more the actual characters, like the seagull here. Um, this the style they've gone for the actual characters. I'm not sure about. Uh, so yeah, you've got the old church, which is in state of disrepair. The alleyway where we first met Festa Shine Top. The jail where we met Otis. The shop. Is that the old shopkeeper? Is that him or is that someone else? It might be him. And then there's like um, some sort of locksmiths that we've not seen before. And some weird symbols. Illuminati type stuff, is it? So this is a new location we've not visited before. And um, there's the keys. There was keys in that other picture. Maybe they're connected. I'm trying to solve puzzles for you already. Uh, we can't see the door that goes down to the tunnels on D D uh, Dinky Island. Interesting. Unless are you supposed to go around? Is it, or is it around the back? And also, I imagine the church should be longer. I'm being very nitpicky here. But no, overall, this looks this looks great. The landscape. The, looks great I'm just, I'm just not a fan of these weird characters at the moment hopefully I'll warm to them what has surprised you about making this game at this point it sounds like you're near the finish line oh is that true I don't know if it should be surprising just getting back together with Dave has been a wonderful experience being able to brainstorm with him talk with him write with him all those things Dave is a much better writer than I am just actually writing stuff and I learned so much from being able to work with him on that and working with uh, the composers who are all doing the music just getting back together into the 35 year old glove really wonderful experience lovely 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 glad he's happy about it and revisiting monkey island i haven't done that in a long time i remember when i first started this project i was writing code and i first fresh it sent it down me because i'd not typed those words into code in 35 years that was just really fun to just kind of relook at the world again it's almost like a not a day has passed except 30 years has i was actually really imp very impressed I would say rather than surprised, maybe a little surprised at how smoothly, relatively speaking, it's gone. Building this whole thing for two years and nobody being in an office together. Oh, they've been doing this over the uh, pandemic. Like, oh, that's interesting. Like over Zoom meetings and stuff. It's kind of a triumph of remote communication to get that to work. And also keeping it secret the entire time. I can't believe we pulled it off. That's amazing. So it's an all remote team putting this stuff together. That's right. And what have you had to do to make sure it's kept under wraps? Whenever we bring people on the project, we just have discussions with them about secrecy, how important it is, the secrecy of Monkey Island, and how important it was to the project, and we wouldn't tell anyone what our launch plans were, the April 1st stuff. So I think they really understood how important it was for that whole thing to be pulled off. The whole April Fool's thing just had to be complete secrecy, and making sure that people understood that secrecy is not about what's in the game, which is typical for games, it's about this that this game even exists. Oh wow. Yeah, so, so are they nearly finished then? That's that's cool. How long have you been planning to reveal the game that way? My blog is almost 18 years old, which is really surprising. It makes me feel old. But the blog is 18 years old, and I've always, every single April 1st, I've always posted something that said, this blog will always be an April Fool's joke free. So I don't really like April Fool's. I've always just posted that, and now it's just kind of a running joke. 
and then I wrote the article on my blog about if I made another, yeah, that's what we looked at before, yeah, and that I kind of realised, wouldn't it be really fun if I got the rights and I just did it as an April Fool's announcement? That was just a weird little thing in the back of my head, it was just a fun little internal joke. I realised that because of the duration of the development, and when we started it, April 1st would fall around the time we needed to announce, and at that point we need to do this. We need to announce this on April Fool's. It just was a joke 18 years in the making. Ah, oh, Ron, you cheeky sausage. It's literally part of our first conversation about the project. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like he, the only reason I'm making this game is for the April Fool's joke. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. This is this could be um, the inside of that shop we saw on Melee Island. Like, so there's another lock here. Lock keys, locks. So this could be um, the inside of that locksmith we just saw. The new locksmith character. So he looks fine. This character, this looks okay. This doesn't look like a weird blocky. I'm not sure why his nose is a different colour, but this this I'm I'm okay with. This uh, this people over here, these look fine too. So I'm hoping most of the characters look okay like this, and not like the weird other ones we've seen. All these weird, interesting keys. I guess there's going to be a lot of puzzles with locked doors and stuff. This parrot's probably going to be funny somehow. Is it going to is it going to watch him make a key and then we're going to distract? Yeah, you can you can go out and then can you make a key like copy what he did because you're the parrot and you copy stuff. Is that what how that's going to that is that the puzzle? Have I solved the puzzle? How much does this new game match with what your vision was in the There are a lot of things and yeah, we looked at the how I was trying to make the game in complete secrecy. We pulled that one off. Oh well that was always a plan. There's some stuff like the pixel art stuff which I think is a bit controversial to some. And I wrote that blog entry entry before Thimbleweed, so he's probably changed his mind on that. I do think a lot of what I wanted to do with the pixel art and making a game that's a little bit of a throwback game. I think I really kind of did that with Thimbleweed, so there's a whole bunch of pixel art stuff that probably isn't accurate. And also, you know, as you think about stuff, I mean, that article or something I just whipped off one afternoon. As you really sink into things, start thinking about what the actual game would be, reality kind of intersects with your fantasy on stuff. But I think generally, I think the spirit of what I said in that article it really does still hold. That's good, because I'm a big fan of a lot of what was in there. How large is the team? 25 people at max, and that's good. He wanted a small team. Is that a typical team size? Uh, it depends on the game. If it's a triple A game, it's going to be several hundreds. Like, yeah, the credits go on for hours. A game like this, Thought Thimbleweed is 14. So, it ends on the games. We, we really wanted um, intimacy, uh, intimacy in the team. Um, Making it because like your Lucas Arts, Lucas Film, and uh, there were small teams back then. It's seven, seven back in the day. Uh, you want a small team where everyone can contribute. Yeah, everyone can be involved. Once projects get beyond a certain size, that sort of stops happening. I imagine so. Like yeah, I've done a bit of testing, and um, I feel like. All they want at the end of the day is a thumb up or a thumb down. They don't actually want you to say, like, uh, oh, I think you could improve it by adding this feature. They're not, they're not interested in any of that. Just, like, how you, good or bad? Tick box, please. Okay. Can you give me a sense? You don't need to go into spoiler territory. Is, oh, how will the other monkey games factor into this one? Tricky thing to discuss. As we announce, when we announce the game, this game really does pick up where Monkey 2 left off. Why am I paraphrasing everything? Oh. How am I paraphrasing instead of reading? That's got to be some special ability. But how it all weaves into the whole world, well, that's something that's been a lot of fun to figure out, and I don't think we're really ready, well, I can't read anyway, to really, ready to really talk about the details yet. Other than that, it's kind of what you would expect from us. So they are they doing some sort of multiverse thing? Why is everyone doing multiverse nowadays? We could talk philosophy, multiverse, about it because I think it might satisfy part of the itch of trying to scratch there. When we were first talking about the project, one of the things we realised was that we can't really build the exact game we would have in '92 because we're not the same people we were back then, and the world is different, and there were several more Monkey Island tie tools in it. 
we see them, we like them, and we didn't just want to not acknowledge them. Our general philosophy was that we would adhere to existing canon. Okay, this is important. Our general philosophy was that we would adhere to existing canon as much as we could with sort of two caveats. One being that it's really hard to keep track of all that stuff, and some of these games don't agree with each other, so there's sometimes there's a paradox and you just live with it. I don't know what he's referring to here, except for possibly the uh, HT Marley thing, which is actually fixable, and I've done that. <clears throat> I think I've got an article on it on um, the wiki. I might make a video on it at some point. The other is that canon can sometimes get in the way of telling a good story, and that's never a battle you want to lose. So whenever there's something you didn't quite fit, we just ignored it conveniently. So now this, this, ooh, this bothers me. If you're, um, depending on what they've done, depending on what they've done, I mean, this, like, is some, there's ways of, like, of doing this right, and way, like, okay, the Star Wars sequel trilogy, they've done, they've had this attitude of, like, we're just going to go ahead with it, and... If if existing stuff matches, great. If it doesn't, we don't care. And then they've upset people. Whereas, uh, for example, I don't know, Crash Four or uh, the Star Trek um, Abrams movies, where they kind of went off there on their own timeline, so it didn't actually matter that the canon didn't match because that canon's over here and the new canon's over here, so they're not actually touching. And see, that worked for what it was doing so hopefully they're going to do it the smart way where we can keep two timelines and they don't bother each other and they're not going to try and crowbar it all into one universe okay here's oh this is from the uh, uh, trailer so you've got Murray you've got this ghost pirate theme it looks like female to me um, and then a ghost pirate bloke. So it looks like they're on Melee Island with the, the colour scheme. Could it like stand stocks um, or something? So has LeChuck invaded again? Or is this not Melee, Melee Island? Who knows? Hopefully we'll find out. What about the game have I not asked you about that you want to talk about? Killer soundtrack, original composers. Yeah, we've sort of seen that. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. the music's going to be amazing. It's just going to be great, isn't it? It's going to be great. Uh, voice actors. Dominic Armato is back. He's so good. He's astounding. He was not around when we made the first games. Uh, despite being involved with Tales, I'd never been in the studio with him before. I've been to conventions, never worked with him. He just nails everything so well. Yeah, he's, he's good. His control is so good. You give him the tiniest bit of direction, he'll just... Grossman makes a tiny squeak noise. Change the line to make it go from awesome to extremely awesome. Yeah, that's good. You called him the Terminator of voice actors. If I didn't, I should have. Uh, how did he react to hearing one of them back? He was pretty stunned. I knew him, but obviously we never worked together because we didn't have voice back then. But I kind of knew him, and I was a, about at the point that I wanted to loop in and, into what we were doing. I live in Seattle, and just by chance he was visiting Seattle that weekend. Oh, wow. Hey, let's get together. Just have a coffee. I'll tell you about my new game. Air quotes. <laughs> We got together, we had coffee, and I think he was very interested in the game, almost kind of wondering whether maybe he could have a voice part in it. And then I told him that it was the new Monkey Island, and he just he was just floored, which is a reaction I get from a lot of people. Before, when we were bringing people on and we talked to them, the minute I mentioned I'm making a new Monkey Island, one person literally started crying. They were so happy it was happening. So I think Dominic was really floored that we were doing it, extremely happy. Yeah, they, I mean, they have to get him back. They can't, they, you can't have um, anyone else doing it at this stage. It would... I mean, I, yeah, I've said I, I would prefer Guybrush to have an English accent, but um, at this stage, like, the canon is, that's his voice, and Dominic is so good at it, so it wouldn't be right to not... Oh, was that the end? Oh, so, uh, yeah, some interesting stuff in there. I thought they were okay. But, yeah. So this is very exciting. And, um... When we find out more, we shall know more. Oh, there's another Illuminati thing here. What is this? What is this? What is all this? Is this some sort of puzzle, or is this just to creep us out? Very exciting. Alright. So, till next time.